Today, I'm gonna teach you how to make a banana hydromel, which is a low ABV mead that tastes like bananas. Let's get started. Hey, this is Man Made Mead. Today, we're making that banana hydromel. This is a recipe that um, I'm sure that someone else has made in the past. Um, I don't know for sure, but this is going to be a low ABV mead that tastes like banana. Here's my recipe up here. I have 7 eighths of a gallon of water, 1.25 pounds of cheatwood clover honey, which is a local honey to me. Um, then we are using one gram of Lauvin EC1118, which is a great yeast for um, lots of mead making purposes. In the secondary, we're gonna add roughly, I mean, we gotta add a lot of bananas. So when these ripen up, we're probably gonna add all six of those um, bananas, pretty medium to large size bananas. Now, this is a, uh, this is, I've already made my must, I'll say that. Most of the time you do have to mix your ingredients. I'll show you right now. Basically, I made four gallons of mead and then, um, you know, I did four gallons, and I'll tell you why in a second, because I'm doing something bigger, but mixed all my honey water in together. So that's what I did there. This is going to be a bigger part, or a small video of a bigger series of hydromels that I'm making. I'm making an apple, a banana, a pear, and a, just a regular hydromel. I'm doing all four of those in four different videos, in my fifth video, I'm gonna have a flight night where I taste test all four of them with some friends. We just chat and talk about mead making and the meads themselves. So, look forward to that. So, let me get a gravity reading of this real fast. I also didn't mention this, but I've already sanitized everything I use. I use star sand. This water right here is uh, clean, you sterilized, sanitized water. I you know, rinse everything I use with it so that I don't have any bad bacteria take over. That's really important, especially with a hydromel because it's a low ABV mead. So step one, mixed everything. Step two, let's go ahead and get our hydrometer reading. I've already done this previously, so I know for a fact this thing is setting at 1.040 gravity, which is roughly about a 5% mead. Um, and I think that's great. That's perfect in that range. So now that we know that, I'll write that information down on my carboy in a second, but I need to add my yeast. This is our third step. We are going to add one gram of this Lauvin EC1118. Let me go ahead and do that. Here is our one gram of yeast. We're gonna pitch it right on top. I could have uh, rehydrated this, but I've decided not to because I don't think I need to in this case. One gram of yeast is plenty to cover this entire one gallon of mead. Now, we are ready to stick our airlock on, write our information down, because this thing has to go through the primary fermentation. After the primary fermentation, we are going to add our bananas into this thing. So, uh, we'll talk about that when we get there, but if you are making this recipe at home, one quick disclaimer, make sure you sanitize everything well, because this being a low ABV mead, it won't be able to fight off bacteria very well, so if you, don't sanitize well, you can have a wild yeast or bad bacteria takeover, which ruins the brew. Um, and we'll talk about this right here in a moment, how to, you know, not worry about that. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and stick my airlock onto this thing and we're gonna let it ferment through the primary. All right, we're back after the primary. It's been about three weeks. I know it's done fermenting for two reasons. One, I saw it start to slow down and the yeast have started to fall to the bottom, meaning that they kind of are halting. Two, the gravity reading is currently 1.000. We started at 1.040. That means it's chewed through all of the sugars available. Time to add our bananas. I have, when those bananas were ripe, I opened them up, of course, and I froze them, actually. So these have been frozen for about four or five days, and they're a little bit cold, um, but they have been thawed out. So we are going to now take and put this into this new container, into a new container, and um, then add our, we're gonna add some bananas to a new container, then rack on top of this. So let me do that real fast. All right, I've racked it over. This is now ready to sit in secondary fermentation. We did lose a little bit of mead to sediment, and that's okay. Obviously, we offset it with the bananas. 
The bananas ended up being a little bit more difficult than I thought to get in, so they turned pretty mushy, and I just shoved them down in, as you saw. We'll let this set for two weeks to impart our banana flavor, at which point we will then go ahead and rack it off and do some extra things to prepare it to be finished. So let's let our banana hydromel continue now. We're back with the banana hydromel. You can see, I'll show a little video on screen right now of what it looks like kind of up close. It's definitely a little uh, murky, lots of banana at the top, which is to be predicted. Um, now you might notice that it is a little bit higher up. It has more volume. That's because I did add some leftover um, whatever hydromel from before that I didn't get to put into the bottle. So I did fill it back up some. Now this has been sitting for two weeks. I am going to rack this off of here. It's very, well, has a lot of stuff in it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take and use my um, auto siphon and tubing. I'm gonna put this around the bottom of the tubing and then this will hopefully pick up any chunks of banana that try to come through. So let me go ahead and rack this into this bucket real fast. All right, so I like this cheesecloth trick. You can see it's still dripping some, but there, this was all stuff that tried to come out of the um, secondary that we don't want in the final result. So I'm gonna let this finish dripping. We are going to now take and add erythritol, which is a, a sugar that is natural for one, but also non-fermentable by yeast. yeast. So, so, so they um, are not gonna be able to ferment on this. Apparently I can't talk right now. So they're not gonna be able to ferment on erythritol. It will simply be used for back sweetening. I like this a lot for this option. Then we are going to add priming sugar, which priming sugar is what we use to bottle carbonate. And that's what we're doing with this one. Um, we are gonna be bottle carbonating instead of force carbonating. Force carbonating requires a kegging system. I don't wanna do that. So the priming sugar will act as that, as the, the bottle carbonation method. So I am going to, to taste add as much erythritol as I feel that I need, but not before I do a taste test. So let me go ahead and get a sample. This is after, of course, the secondary. We tasted it after the primary. Let's see what it tastes like after the banana. Whoa, definitely smells like banana. <laughs> um, it, it, it does have like a very, uh, not fake banana smell, I'm not used to banana smells in liquid, so this is kind of funky. Very aromatic, but it has a slight sweetness from honey and a warmth from honey that is very nice. Ooh, okay. Ooh, yeah. You get the banana taste. The problem with it is the yeast have fermented on the banana, taking away all the sugars, so you don't get any sweetness from banana. You get just like the, the flat banana taste minus sugar, minus the, the nice thing that we like about fruit. Yeah, the honey character's still there. I do believe that adding some extra sugar to this that will stay in there to back sweeten it um, will actually pronounce the banana flavor. Not bad, I like it. Let's add our erythritol. Mm. Okay, I've added eight total uh, tablespoons of erythritol which is almost all in my bag right here. I didn't have much left, but let's taste it. Definitely helps pronounce, the, the sweetness definitely helps pronounce that um, banana flavor. And it takes away the sourness. I feel like I had to add a lot of erythritol to really boost it, to really taste banana-y. Even with the amount of bananas we put in, um, it, it tastes banana-y, but the fermentation side blew off the, or took away the sugars. If that makes sense. They ate the sugars of the banana flavoring, which is a lot of the banana. Um, you get the aroma, definitely still on the nose. It smells great, tastes great. We're now gonna add priming sugar, AKA honey. We're gonna add 1.07 ounces, according to this little website that I'm using that helps me know how much priming sugar to add. I normally add about 26.5 grams of regular priming sugar. So this 1.07 ounces of honey actually equals out to that total 25.6 in priming sugar. So let me add this in. All right, I've moved everything over, added all the sugar, priming sugar, erythritol. New gravity is 1.010. I should have taken this gravity after the erythritol, but I forgot. So this includes the honey we added. Um, I'll put all my math up here to tell you what my current ABV is. 
We are now going to take and bottle this thing, and I am excited to see how this bottle carbs. Let's bottle it. All right, that's it. I have finished bottling them. They will start bottle conditioning. I got a total of really seven beer bottles um, here, but one of them turned into a glass of this because it's pretty good and I wanna drink it. So this is also another bottle I have. I believe this is a, not quite a 750 mil, a little bit less, some math number, I don't know. Theoretically, priming sugar should help bottle carbonate these. I'm excited for that. Should take about two weeks um, if you're gonna add priming sugar, two, two to three weeks if you're in normal conditions and sometimes depending on the weather, it changes. But I do have labels for these. They look like that right there. You can see it on there and we'll be back once this is done carbonating. So here we go. All right, and here we are. It is now taste test time. We are gonna go ahead and crack this baby open and see how it is there's definitely some floating banana at the bottom but let's see if there's any carbonation oh there you go i don't know if you hear it or not there was a little bit of a little bit of a hiss yes we got carbonation and we don't have a bottle bomb oh man hold on i gotta get close up all right here we go i'm gonna go ahead and pour it so you guys can see There's that carbonation that we wanted. Now it's pretty carbonated. <laughs> maybe, maybe a little overly carbonated and I'm get, definitely getting a lot of these banana chunks in there. That's okay though. That looks good, I don't know about you guys. All right, so let's taste it. Oh man. Yeah, it's definitely, um, it's a little bit dry. You have the banana essence. It is, I don't know if I, in hindsight, put enough erythritol to back sweeten enough. I do get some, uh, not sour banana, but like tart banana, which is not normally a taste you want. The carbonation is very refreshing. It does have a nice mouthfeel. Um, it is very full bodied for being, you know, very low ABV, 6.7, almost 7%. Ooh, it is very refreshing though. It's not overly sweet, which is nice. It doesn't taste like two in your face, like like fake banana. It definitely has real banana essence in that, um, as, as doing the most would say, the banana runts um, kind of taste you get from banana sometimes. I'm not getting that. Oh man, this thing is so refreshing. I was a little worried about the honey being the priming sugar, but it is perfect. I think it, it, worked, it did a great job as the priming sugar element and continued to uh, bolster the honey character that we wanted. This, this thing is fantastic. The odd barb, I mean, it's pretty dang good. If you'd like to make this recipe, go ahead and check it out. Um, it's in this description, it's also in this video, but this is fantastic. If I were to do it again, I would probably make it just a tiny bit sweeter, but other than that, it is great. So, thanks for watching. This has been the Banana Hydromel, and there are three other videos and a video called the flight night where me and some friends get together and we taste test all of these things. If you wanna check those things out, feel free to check it out in the description below. And I hope you will um, possibly make this recipe. So thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you next time in another video. Cheers.